Hello guys, uh, Free here. Welcome to uh, the demo for today. Today we're going to be looking at GitHub Copilot. We're going to be doing a, a review or maybe a refresher of this tool and this capability. And we're also going to give some commentary around this product. A few months back, maybe a year or so, when uh, GitHub Copilot first launched, uh, there was a lot of fanfare around it, both from uh, hobbyists and also from expert developers. And the promise around this was huge, but maybe this is just my vantage point. It seems like that enthusiasm is dying and I don't know if it's just so me seeing, not seeing it the, the right way. But what I wanted to do as somebody who looks at new products and reviews them uh, is to go back, do a review with a little bit of focus on SQL and data. GitHub Copilot can help with uh, programming in different perspectives. But I really want to go in and really focus on the area in which Git, uh, GitHub Copilot can help as far as uh, SQL and data is concerned. So uh, part of what we're going to see today is the setup of GitHub Copilot. And then we're going to just uh, go through the UI. Now, a couple of things have changed. Last time I mentioned uh, GitHub Copilot, at the time it was in beta. And if I remember correctly, it wasn't paid, it was free. But now things have changed. So I just went through this. Uh, you're going to have to upgrade your plan and uh, go through some billing uh, for this to work. The billing for this, if I can go into the billing page, I believe it's about, and I just subscribed to this, $10 per month. And it's also about $100 for a year. So $100 for a year. So $100 for 12 months and $10 for a month. So. You get to save 20 bucks if you go with the, with the yearly plan. So I could see why having this paid would dissuade some people who just want to try this. But for the sake of doing demos, um, I'm going to have to put my credit card forward and get this uh, done so we can see GitHub Copilot uh, again with the focus on SQL. So if you come in here, once you've done the paid version, uh, you can always come in and choose whether you want your suggestions to pull from matching public code or not. So I just choose allow for that and then allow GitHub to use my snippets for product improvements. We're going to open up a brand new Visual Studio or code environment. Now, there are a couple of things that you need if you're going to be uh, working with uh, GitHub Copilot. If you haven't used this before, uh, you just want to get set up as an extension, search for Copilot. <coughs> With any luck, we should get the uh, Copilot come up. You want to go ahead and install that extension and it does say subscription is required. This is new. As far as I remember, subscription wasn't always required. So to take advantage of this, you're going to have to subscribe, which I did already. So click on here and it will take you to that subscription page. Now, once you have that installed, like I do, if I go back, let's just close on this. If I go back and you can click on GitHub Copilot to disable it, but I don't want to disable it. So I want to go ahead and use it. So let me cancel on this and do one thing really quick. So let's go back in here. I don't know how to make the sign in pop, but it does ask you to sign in to access GitHub Copilot because I can't really use it now unless I'm signing. Let's go ahead and sign in. The extension GitHub Copilot wants to sign in using GitHub. So we're going to go ahead and allow that to sign in using GitHub. Now it says always allow VS Dev to links to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I think with any log, we should be signing by using a GitHub or Copilot. Now, once you sign in, so if I click on this, that should be fine. And I zoom that at this point we should be signing into a GitHub Copilot. Next thing we're going to do is let me go ahead and close on this. I'm going to open up this extension that allows me to write some code and let's go ahead and authenticate into my account. So I'm connecting to my Snowflake environment. This might look different for you, but uh, if you have the extension, you should be able to do what I'm doing here. here. Essentially, what I want to see is how we can throw GitHub Copilot at, at writing SQL. So with that done, we're going to go ahead and create a new file. We can save this file as demo 
to actually use Copilot when writing SQL, let's start do a quick prompt and tell it we're working with SQL. Now, typically when doing things with SQL, I think if you're comfortable with SQL, it's very easy to create tables and to do some basic tasks on SQL. But if you're not familiar, you might find yourself on Stack Overflow searching for how to create table in SQL, right? You might be doing something like this. You can browse down here. You can see create table in SQL and you're going to copy this and then you're going to go paste it, right? But if you're proficient, you don't have to do all of this. Now, for someone who wants to be more productive without having to do that, here's where Copilot can come in. So we've prompted it to say we're writing SQL. Now I can say create table. If you watch below here, Copilot is thinking. So it was thinking, and now it's, it's giving us some suggestions. If I wanted these suggestions, I can accept everything. But I don't want all of this. So I can say create table. Let's go ahead and delete that. Say customer. And voila. In very simple lines, we have a create customer table statement ready to go. And we can go on to the next one. And the whole idea behind this is it should improve productivity. Again, for different languages, Python, PHP, Java, Scala, I think there are a lot of languages that this supports, but I'm just kind of focusing on, on SQL here. Let's say we didn't want to create a table and we wanted to select from table, show me the top records in customer's table. All right. So when I do enter and you can see GitHub Copilot is uh, suggesting a SQL statement. All right. And if I wanted this, I can go ahead and take that. Now I can see top 10. I don't know why it's coming up with top 10, but ideally I might not want top 10 there. Maybe I just want everything. Typically you don't do select star. The reason why I did customers is because within my environment, I do have a table called customer, so I can actually make that as customer. All right. So Copilot is, it's interesting. It could help with productivity, but for somebody who is proficient, maybe this is just of a noise for you, but for a beginner, this could be a very powerful. Now, I wouldn't recommend just somebody who is just trying to learn and just understand the basics to be using something like this. You want to be proficient before you jump in on something like this, I would, I would imagine. Let's try something else here. Let's do top records and customers and the yeah, others. Let's see what Copilot gives us. It's giving me a comment. Okay. I take the comment, but show me the. <laughs> All right. So select. You see, sometimes it's not working, right? This is why when you use machines from customers, join. Oh, now this is interesting because somehow I don't think it's looking at my schema here, but it's now suggesting jo join on others on customer ID equals others of customer ID, assuming that having count others greater than 10. Okay. So you can make the argument that this is making me productive to a certain extent. If I know what I want, assuming you know SQL, but if you don't, then uh, I don't know if this is going to help you that much. Now I have a SQL statement, which I can run. Does my order have, uh, my order has customer ID, customer key. So there's no customer ID. If I run this term and it wouldn't work, right? If I go ahead and run this, it wouldn't work because I don't have, um, there are ways to potentially optimize this. I do have customer key and then on customers, I have customer key. So customer key will be what I want to use, but you can see that this is just uh, kind of guessing. Very interesting. So there you go, guys. I think this is a, it's an interesting tool. There is a lot of commentary around the IP because uh, GitHub Copilot came from what OpenAI did and they partnered with Microsoft to create GitHub Copilot. They've indexed all the code repository from, from GitHub, essentially millions and billions and billions of lines of code to train this model for writing code, essentially. People think uh, 
you know, if you have your code on GitHub and it's been trained on this, could that be evaluated in IP? Which was one of the conversations that uh, people were having when this came out. But as a technologist, I'm always fascinated by, by tools like this. I think that the promise is definitely there. Are there things to fine tune? Absolutely. Are we going to turn the tides of innovation? I don't think so, right? I, I just think that this is just going to get better and better. If you think about this at version one, by the time version two comes, it will just be uh, mind blowing, right? Some of the things that people struggle in SQL would be windowing function. SQL statement to SQL window statement to get some of previous. Yeah, this is something that people sometimes struggle over in SQL. Now, this is ANSI SQL. Some, depending on the SQL tool you're using, they might have different engines, but you can see the thing is trying, it's trying its best. This is all I had for this showcase here on GitHub Copilot. I keep my eye on this very closely. I think that the promise is definitely there. And I know part of the interesting thing about these tools is just your creativity to prompt. I, I think there's going to be a field of prompting engineering. So by prompting engineering, I mean how to write questions like this, like your prompt, this is a prompt so that you can get a response. That is what you want. We're still at the infancy. You can see I'm on the screen. I'm, I'm just blanking out because I don't even know what to ask. Sometimes you have to know what you're trying to solve to then ask that question. And are you asking the right questions? There might be a field of just specializing in how to create and generate this, this prompts that would make the machine or this engine give you the correct code that you want. Just like if you get into a stack overflow and just type table, you're not going to get a relevant result, right? If you, you kind of have to know how to fine tune your query so you can get the result that you want. There's almost an add to that. Very similar to GitHub Copilot. This is exciting. So guys, if you haven't checked it out, I'll recommend you check it out. Uh, install the extension. I know the pricing might be a little bit of a put off to some folks, but if you can stomach that, I think it's uh, something uh, worth being aware of or maybe even using if you're up to that. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, this has been through with another demo here. As uh, so always, if you have any questions or comments or tools you want me to review or do a demo about interesting tools or interesting people you want me to talk to, I'm always uh, more than happy to do that. So what we've seen today is GitHub Copilot. Check it out. Uh, leave any comments below and I will see you in the next uh, demo. Mm -hmm.